Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Life in the Spirit. My name is David. We've got Joe and we've got Craig. Guys, back together. Nice. We're back yeah. together. We were off for a week if anybody noticed. <laughs> they did not. If you didn't, <laughs> then we, that's a shame. That, that makes us sad. I can then. sing a song right now. Yeah. Together <laughs> again. <laughs> yes. It was, it felt weird not being here for a week, actually in None of us were here for a week, so yeah, that's okay. That, it was okay taking a little break, but we all got busy. But we are back. We're back and we're fired up, <laughs> right, Dave? <laughs> Craig is fired up. Craig, Craig's fired. We've up. we've been talking for <laughs> like a while before we started this, and Craig's on fire. I'm burning. Right on. So if this episode doesn't air, <laughs> there's things that were said, it's we had to take fault. it down. Yeah. It's Craig's fault. No, just kidding. If you hear little bleeps, it's Craig's so, <laughs> Yeah. So if we get taken off by YouTube. Ooh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Could happen. Good. And if that happens, go to the app. They can't take that down. Yeah, so, yes. But yeah, today we want to just kind of refresh and the dream that you had, a vision you had. Sure. You're going to do a short recap of it to make sure everybody's on the same page. But the last episode, we actually had quite a few different ladies up here we with did. you and me, Craig. And we kind of showed what we do at the round table. And when someone presents a dream, vision, or whatever it may be, kind of the process it looks like to dissect, try to figure out break it down, what it's like. And then once it's broke down, what are ways that we can use this strategically to pray and press into what the Lord has? Yeah. And so how about you just give a quick recap of it? And I then... will. So this is a vision that I had. It's been, uh, it was during uh, a church service when, who was speaking? Ken Roberts. Ken Roberts was speaking. And it was right at the very tail end of when he was sharing. The Lord gave me a vision. I held on to it until we actually had the round table. And then I, I shared uh, the vision. Or actually, I shared it with us tonight, the first time. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so this is the vision, uh, short version, is I saw a ship uh, in the water. Um, and it was a bigger ship. It, and not like it was a yacht. It was like a cruise ship that was in the water. It was slanted at a 45-degree angle. Um, in the water, half was underneath water, half was on top of the water. The water was perfectly smooth. There wasn't a ripple or anything in the water. And uh, the water that it was in was as blue as the sky was above. Um, I saw a, the captain uh, of the ship. He was a white-haired, white-bearded uh, captain at the wheel. And he was focused, and all he was doing is looking forward, and that was the only look that he, that he had going forward. Um, and then I saw the numbers 45. And at first, remember, I thought, is that 45 degrees? Um, I don't think that it was. So then we took that vision, um, you know, to the board or to the round table, and we shared um, with them and we began to break it, break it down. Yeah, and I think if you watch the episode where we had the other people up here besides us, it's so, and it's a perfect example of the Lord, people get different pieces. So he doesn't always reveal everything to one person. He right. reveals different things. And so things that I didn't think of or yeah. didn't come to my mind, yeah, someone was sure. like, well, was it like this? And I was like, oh. Because honestly, when you said at a 45 degree angle, I was thinking on the side. And so I never asked the question, but then I think it was maybe Bethany. It was like, was it 45 degree on the side or was it 45 degree like up and down? Right. And then you hear like up and down. And I was like, oh, that's completely not how I took it. Like, I was thinking something completely different, which yeah. then changes things. Yeah, because the ship was not listing. Listing is when it leans to mm -hmm. the side, either yeah. side, left or right. Yeah. So it wasn't listing. Have you had any further revelation on the 45? Or? Um, yes. That you can share on YouTube? Can and you share <laughs> it on the, on the internets? On the internet's pro, I mean, I can share. Maybe it'd be taken down, but um, I, I'll just share my, my thoughts on it. How's sure. that? Yeah, that's fair. So, you know, I'm, I'm as, as I'm seeing this, as, and as I've had a chance to pray about it, and as uh, other people at the round table spoke about it, I think there was more clarity uh, to the vision that was there. And I thought, you know, at first I thought. Um, was it for the church? Was it for the body? Was it for our body? Was it for the body as a whole? Or was it for a nation? 
So I think it fits all three, all four, mm -hmm. because I think it's relevant to each and every part of it. So I, I looked at it as being a part um, of the body, first and foremost, because one of the words that came in um, from one of the brothers, um, a part of adoration, he sent in, and he said on Friday night, when encounter night, um, mm -hmm. he said he got he kept getting over and over, right the ship, right the ship. Yeah. And so I, I took that as well, and I remember I sent that to, to you guys as well, to yeah. read that and to the others on the round table. And it c kind of began to make even more sense is that um, we need to get things right. You mm -hmm. know, we need to get this ship on an even keel. So again, I'm thinking, is it for the body? Is it for the church, our church, other churches, church as a whole, the country, mm -hmm. the nation? So I'm watching, I think, and, and again, I think it's for all of them, you yeah. know, is because I think what has happened and what has lulled us into that place where the, the ship was at a 45 degrees, everybody was about doing their business, but they weren't even seeing what was going on around them. They didn't see what was going on mm. um, to their left, to the right, or in front. They didn't have a clue what was happening, except for the one man that had to focus. Mm -hmm. And he was focused, and all he was doing is looking forward. Nobody else had that because they had been lulled into a place of stagnancy where they weren't even moving. Remember, the ship was not moving. It was yeah. just staying right there where it was. And so I think as, as a country, I think that we've been lulled into this position um, because I think we put a lot of our hope in uh, the 45th president you know, uh, of the United States, Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. And I, I think as a church, and Donald Trump is a good man. I'm not saying that he's not a good man. Um, but I think our focus, has, you know, was on a man instead of on God and what God was doing for the country. Yeah. And so we have to be able to refocus um, the ship, you know, so we can right the ship. We can be mm -hmm. at an even keel and we can continue to go forward because um, we're not in a place that we're sinking yet, right? I mean, we're, we're a little bit underwater, but nobody's... Notice that we're underwater. There's no water inside the ship. But we are in a place, I think, that's very dangerous. Because like we said and we talked about, is that if a storm would arise, if anything came against the ship, we knew, looking at the ship, that all would be lost. Yeah. Because it, it wouldn't take anything in order for that ship to be capsized or that ship to go under. And so we have to uh, refocus our thinking on the one who got us to a place where we're at. And I think... You know, in the body of Christ, I think that's what happens. We get lulled into a place where we think we're doing good. We think that we've got the mind of Christ, and we think we're moving forward. And all of a sudden, you know, something happens, and it kind of, okay, so we've been pushing, pushing, pushing. We've been digging, digging, digging. We've been going deep, going deep. And then all of a sudden, it's like, okay, we're kind of tired. You know, now what do we do? So I think, we, you know, we've been kind of in that place where, you know, let's be honest, guys. I mean, we've been running full tilt. I mean, as we've been plowing, I mean, we've had the harnesses on our backs, and we've been plowing, and we've been digging, we've been going deep. And it's, it's hard work. And I think sometimes uh, we forget as a church, as a body, that, you know, we think that we're the only ones that are doing this because we're getting tired. But we're bringing those people alongside of us. We, we have people that are joining us. Sometimes we forget about those people, but people are joining us. And, you know, some of those people, um, let's, let's be real right here just for a second. Some of those people we're dragging with us. But they're coming alongside of us because we've made a decision that we aren't going to leave anybody behind. Remember that word, the other prophetic word. We're going to be joined arm in arm, linked yeah. together to go forward. Yeah. And so I think that, that we've been doing that, and I think we sometimes um, forget about those prayers that we had in the very beginning. Because if we go back to the original word, what God was going to do in this body, mm -hmm. in that work, and, you know, uh, uh, Carl Wesley Anderson, when he spoke here on Sunday, you know, he talked a little bit about yeah. that, spoke prophetically over the church as well. And Joe, I remember the word that you had about, you know, hundreds if not thousands being saved. How many did you say? The 500 and some thousand, I think. Yeah, it was a half a million is what yeah. I remember. So if, if that's going to happen, I mean, we have to be able, or no, we just have to lay everything aside and we have to go, yeah. go uh, forward with what God's doing. I made a statement, David, and I was kind of joking when I said it, but... You know, we're, we're trying to be, you know, doing things for the kingdom, and I don't even think we're kingdom-minded. Minded. Yeah. You know, we, we aren't. I mean, I think that, 
you know, we think that we have this grandiose idea of what the church is supposed to look like and how we're supposed to do things. And I think that we've just got a taste and a touch of what God is doing and how he wants to lead the church, how he wants to lead the body and where he wants us to go. But then something happens and we kind of back off because we get our feelings hurt or we might get offended by somebody or what somebody did. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that you guys do. I'm not saying that I do, but I'm, I know that it happens. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we just have to be really careful in what we're doing because, you know, we have to understand that it's, it's not about us. It's not about adoration, but it is about God's moving into a place and allowing the spirit of God to rest on a place, the spirit of God to rest yeah. in this place. And so if we aren't willing, if we aren't able to lay aside our own personal things and what we think they are that identify us, yeah. um, if we can't lay that stuff aside, we aren't going to go anywhere. Mm-hmm. So that ship is going to continue to be at that 45 degrees. Yeah. Can you guys tell I'm a little fired up? <laughs> yep, I like it. So it's good. We, we have to be able to, and, and David, you said it, but we have to be able to get over ourselves. Yeah. We really do. You know, we think that we have it all together. I'm, I am saying this uh, to you and to you guys. Look, if there's a brother that has a greater gift that can do what we do or a group of people that do what we do, I'm saying you come up and you do this yeah. because I want that. Mm-hmm. Because it's, it's not about us, it's not about me, and it's not about what we do, but it is about bringing, you know, Christ to center and yeah. into focus, right? Yeah. And so if we can do that, if we can bring Christ to center and in focus in what we're doing, I mean, it, we have to take ourselves completely out of the equation. Mm-hmm. And so that goes for everything in the body of Christ, right? So that goes from the very word that the preacher's preaching, yeah. that the focus is not about him, it's about what God's doing. Yeah. And so, and, and there's so many facets of what God's doing. So we have to make sure that, mm-hmm. you know, we take this time, you know, that, that we pray, we intercede, we fast as a church, as a body together. Yeah. I mean, guys, you know, we, we look at these encounter nights that we have, we have them once a month. Mm-hmm. We should be having them more often than that. Yeah. You know, we I agree. <laughs> I agree. I'm totally there. So, so we we have you know we have times where we should be getting to, you know together to pray. And I'm not trying to put a guilt trip on anybody. You guys know my heart. I am not trying yeah. to do that. But if we truly want God to show up in a place and be able to His Spirit to rest here. Mm-hmm. And for us to, to feel his presence every time we enter in and for healings to happen. We've talked about this every time. Yeah. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to, to be in position when we walk in that he's here, that he's here all the time. So that means it's a, it's a continual prayer. Mm-hmm. It's a continue. I mean, it's continual worship to the Lord. Yeah. And so we have to get to that place. Carl Wesley spoke about that mm-hmm. even on Sunday. So these things are important. I, I get that we're in the very beginnings of it, but I'm sorry. We have to uh, get over ourselves mm-hmm. to move forward. And I, and guys, it, it is hard work. Yeah. Because we are dragging a lot of people along with us. Mm-hmm. I mean, you guys understand that, right? But it's, it's good. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, I, I, I look at that in a different way and I think, oh, man, this could really be, you know, it, it's hard to drag, you know, people along and because I know that there's those that are ahead of me that are dragging me. Yeah. Right? But I look at it as, as we're dragging people, as we're bringing people with us, it's only strengthening our mm-hmm. resolve and who we are. Yeah. It's only building more muscle or mm-hmm. more spiritual muscle because we're actually able to do this. Because it's not by our might or by our strength. Yeah. But no. by his. Yeah, that's so that we're able to do this. So guys, <laughs> comments. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I mean that it's so good because I mean, we we've we talk outside of, you know, obviously up here and I mean we've got to get to the place where you know, and I'm just going to be real, and this might be uncomfortable for and it's making me uncomfortable even thinking about that. I'm about to say it, but <laughs> they're going to take this off YouTube. Yeah, this is sure. coming off YouTube. But, but no, like how many of us, like how many of us say we're after one thing? We're after the Lord, His presence, revival, 
and when I say revival, the effects of God's presence, which are the healing soul. But we're after one thing, which is God. Yeah. And then re- revival is a thing that happens because you have, have God in your midst. But how many of us, we say this all the time, every time we're together, any time that anybody from adoration especially, but I mean, for the most part, it's any church yeah. that says, like, this is what we're about, whatever. But then we have things like encounter. I mean, can you remember the last time we had an encounter where, like, God didn't show up? There's uh, always been a time yes, where everything. it might not be the entire time where all of a sudden it's just like, whoa. But there's usually a 30, 40, 30 to 45 minute span where it's just like, whoa, God's here right now and I don't even know what yeah. to do. Yes. So we say as a people, this is what we're about. This is all we care about. We just want to feel God's presence. And then encounter happens. And I would say a quarter of maybe the church is there. And I just want to say, I think I told you, Craig, this. I was like, what is so dang important that you're saying that that is more important than experience the presence of the Lord? If you know the presence of the Lord shows up and these things, and you get to experience that, you, because everybody comes with an expectation. If I have the expectation, like, it's encounter nights. Yeah. And, and it's not just encounter nights. I'm just showing, saying this as an example. Yeah. But we get to come. I know there's going to be a 34, five-minute span that the Lord shows up in a crazy way. What is so important that I'm willing to miss that? Like, right. I, it boggles my mind. And so mm. I think I was telling you this, Craig. We've got to get to where, as of right now, I feel like we're lying to ourselves, but we're also lying to God because we keep saying these things. And if we keep saying these things without the action behind it, why is God going to want to continue to show up? Because we are lying to him with our actions. Like, it would be yeah. like me saying to you, Joe, yeah, I'll be there to help you on whatever project you have on Friday, but never show up. Yeah. You always ask me. I always say yes, but never show up. Yeah. Are you going to keep asking me at some point you're going to be like no and probably you're going to have a great project for me to help out on and maybe it could be a crazy blessing to me but you're not even going to show up or ask me because I've said no or I've just lied to you over and over because by my actions and that's what I feel like and it just goes with what you said Craig like our complacency we just it's so flippant with our mouths now we just are used to saying it but then our actions are not at all backing it up. And like you said, David, it's just not, it's just not about encounter. Yeah, no. This has to be, you know, a, a, a way of life. I mean, it's a Sunday yeah. morning. I mean, what's so important that, you know, we have to be, and I understand with kids and meals, I get all that stuff, but, you know, w- what if church went till 3 o'clock yeah. on a Sunday? I, David, I remember those days. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I mean, this, this stuff happened, and we had... We had crazy stuff happen, you know, with the Lord healing and, and touching people. And, you know, it's like we've let go of something that, you know, God did in a generation of people. And um, we've got to get back um, to what God has called us to be. And we've got to get back to that place where, you know, God is is visiting and he's resting, you know, mm-hmm. upon his church and upon his people. Because I guarantee you, if, if that happens, even if there's a few... Um, that do that. I guarantee you, when God shows up, mm-hmm. you know things are still going to happen. Yeah. But it would be greater if more people got involved because when people get touched, that's when they get yeah. blessed and that's when they speak of the goodness of God. And so, you know, I, I realize, you know, um, <laughs> people, people are people. They, you know, and we we just have to get out of our own way. Yeah. Uh, and that that's. It's it's nobody else but us yeah. that that gets in the way, and so, we're a part of that. We're saying this, and we're I'm sa- saying, and we're saying this. To we're ourselves. saying this to ourselves yes. because as I'm speaking, it's like, oh man, Craig, you know, because I can tell you what I did last week. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like, yeah, but you met, yeah. Well, I I get that. So it, it's not that you know we're we're not trying to beat anybody up. Mm. We're just speaking a truth where God wants us to be, and it's going to take a while for us to get there, probably. Because it seems like it seems like we continue to beat this horse. Yeah, it does. And the horse isn't yeah. going anywhere because it's old, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So we, you know, we talk about this newness and what God's doing, and it's everything that mm-hmm. we're doing. 
It's new everything every day. Yeah. And so we have to look at the way we do things. We have to look at the way we do things prophetically. This mm. is new. Yeah. You know, actually what we're doing. So we have to, the way we do it prophetically, the preaching that's coming forth, the people that we have come in and speak, you know, our worship, everything that we do, mm -hmm. we have to do it as unto the Lord. But we can't just do it out of the past. We have to do it out of what God's doing in the new. Yeah. You know, because what we continue to do is we try to pour a new wine into an old wineskin, yeah. and it never works. Yeah. yeah. That wineskin will eventually explode because mm -hmm. it cannot take the pressure yeah. of the new wine. Yeah. And so that's what I see the faults of church and what's happening in church is that, you know, they sense that something is new. Mm -hmm. It's being poured into the old. It can't contain the pressure and it fails. Yeah. Yeah. There, yeah, there's just so much. There's so much there, and so it's, like, heavy, you know? I don't know if you guys can feel that heaviness, yeah. but it's, like, there's so much of my life that I just want to say, <clears throat> forget all these other parts. Like, we're doing the adoration school in the yeah. basement from <clears throat> 8 a.m. to about 11.30, Monday through Thursday, and, like, I have literally given from 6 a.m., I wake up at 6, I come here and I pray and and study and, and do whatever. And then 8 o'clock, we come in here and worship for a half an hour. And then from 8.30 to 11.30, for three hours, we're in class, like, learning from the Lord. And it's truly the Holy Spirit shows up every time in that Amen. class. And, like, today even, Lynn Furrow was teaching on just God is love. God is love. He's not full of love. He is love. That's right. And it was like, this is not a new revelation to us. You know, it, anybody who's been in Sunday school knows God is love. But there was a moment in class where it was like, we were all just quiet. And we were just like before the Lord, just being yeah. like, there was a revelation from the Holy Spirit. On that God is love. Like it's, you know, it's nothing like you yeah. just teach it and teach it and teach it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> like once God reveals it to your heart, it was like literally for five minutes, we're sitting there in silence. Nobody's saying anything. That's good. And we're all just like kind of looking down, <laughs> trying not to cry in front of everybody. And it's like, what are you willing to give up to be a part of that? Yeah. And, Joe, I'm just going to cut in just for a second because this is kind of your fault. No, it's David's fault. That, that we're walking <laughs> into this because you spoke a word uh, early on about laying everything down mm -hmm. and what that looks like. And that thing that you spoke, and I knew that it was from the Lord, that thing that you spoke has just, it's touched me deeply. And so I think about that all the time. So... Joe, you started this. Yeah, it's your fault. It's from the Lord. It is from the Lord. It is from the Lord, yes. Like anybody can oh, say. It's just know, the couple of words. What are you willing to yeah. give up to the Lord? Mm -hmm. But when the Holy Spirit's behind it, and that's what's happening, man. Just the, the word Holy love. The Holy Spirit is behind it. Like when Lynn preaches, it's like there is like. This is a message from the Lord. It's not just oh, Lynn talking. That's, that is this right. This is the Spirit of God in this place mm -hmm. moving on the words and giving living and active, real cutting heart words that are, can only come from the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So I think, like, man, like, I don't know. It's tough to explain, but it is. a it resting is. place like when uh, uh, Carl was talking about the thin places. The thin mm -hmm. place. Like, yes. It's thin between heaven and earth right here in this place. Like, mm. that's what we need. Where people walk in, and and I think I don't want to get used to the presence of the Lord. Yeah, I man. don't want to walk in and just be like, yeah, I don't feel anything. Yeah. I want to be so sensitive to the Spirit. And, and even walking in in this place and worshiping, you can still sit there and have a bad attitude and mm -hmm. not be see focused on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. It's you, you're f you've got to be focused on the Lord. And we just, I don't want to come in grumpy. 
and yeah. stay mm-hmm. grumpy and leave grumpy. Yeah, I, I want to be changed. Yeah, I, I, and I think that's, that's what is going to happen when we leave ourselves at the door. Yep. Yeah. And enter into a place. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, boy. Man, Hosea 6.6. 6. I desire steadfast love instead of sacrifice. I yeah. desire that you know me more than you give your offerings. What a powerful verse. What yeah. And Jesus told it twice in Matthew 9 and Matthew 12. Go and study this. Find out what this means. Yes. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. Man, we need to dive into that scripture and just be like, I love you, Jesus. Like, I know we say that a lot at Adoration yeah. Church. We, we say, I love you, Jesus. But it's so powerful and it breaks off so many barriers in your heart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah, I just... I. I, I, I want to get to that place where we enter in. There's no words, just the presence of the Lord. Mm-hmm. And it carries us into the Holy of Holies. And all we shout is praise to the King. Yeah. Holy, holy, mm-hmm. holy yeah. is Lord God Almighty. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah, it will happen. For sure. 100%. Yeah. I don't even know what to say right now. (laughs) This is like, this is what it was like in class this morning. Where you're just like, I don't want to say anything to ruin the moment. Yeah. Because something's happening right now. Yeah. Yeah. No, and I think something is happening like right now as we're talking. And maybe it's just we're releasing something out there or... Yeah. But... Yeah, you can feel it right now. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> on that note, <laughs> we might as well just end the Release it, Lord. Ep- episode then. But, uh, guys, we appreciate you being with us today. And, uh, yeah, if we get fired up, <laughs> sorry. But, uh, yeah, this I don't even know what to say right now. It's really, yeah. Anyways, we love you guys, and we'll see you next time. Bye. God bless you.